Hello guys, Grumpy. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today we're going to be covering more Red Power 2 stuff. So we're going to be covering pneumatic tubes, redstone tubes, restriction tubes, mag tubes, accelerators, filters, all kinds of cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get started now. First thing we're going to cover is this pneumatic tube and the filter. Uh, the pneumatic tube is your basic bread and butter pipe for um, Red Power. So like Buildcraft uses cobblestone pipes and diamond pipes and gold pipes and all this stuff. Most of those pipes have been replaced by this one type of pipe in Red Power. Red Power machines are a hell of a lot smarter and so are the machines. Machines are a lot more versatile and powerful. So all that stuff you learned in Buildcraft, most of it's been replaced by just this basic pneumatic tube. So let me show you how this works. Um, we have a basic chest right here. We got a little inventory in there. We got some buttons and some MFSUs. Right here we have a filter. And basically a filter replaces a wooden pipe in an engine. And it's a lot more powerful and versatile. Right now it's off. All I got to do is if I want to pull stuff out, let's pulse it. And the first thing I want to show you is that there's the MFSUs and the buttons. Uh, first thing to show you is that pulled all that stuff out a stack at a time, so it's very powerful. It's got the pow more power than the combustion engine because this thing can actually run faster than the combustion engine. Now I have this timer right here set to one second. I can turn it down to as little as half a second. And so this thing will pull out two stacks out of this chest per second. So that's super fast. But several cool things. First of all, um, it doesn't have to warm up like an engine does. And secondly, it can't ever blow up. Third, and doesn't require any kind of fuel. Another thing is it's more compact. So like if I was to use engines, I'd have a wooden pipe right here. And the engine would be beside it. Um, I don't have to use uh, an engine or any of that, so it's a lot more compact. So you'll get hooked on these. Once you learn to, to get good at this red power stuff, you'll never mess with the build craft much anymore. Occasionally, but not very often. But anyway, this filter right here is also programmable, so let's go ahead and program it. Um, let's see, let's, let's put a piece of dirt in here. And we're going to come back over to this chest and put this whole stack in here. And let's put some other stuff in there too. Let's put some orange insulated wire. And some oh, sorry. Over here yawning. Uh, also put some gas turbines in here. So normally a filter pulls stuff out of an inventory space from top left to bottom right. So if we turn on this filter, it's going to pull these out first, then these, and finally the dirt. But we have this filter program now. So. Um, we put one piece of dirt in here and what, what that means is whenever this filter receives a pulse it'll pull out one piece of dirt. If I put a torch in there and pulse it'll pull out one torch. I could I can program it though to pull out whatever it wants. So right there it's going to pull out four tor torches every time it receives a pulse. So let's go and put our dirt back in there and let's see what happens if we turn it back on. So now it's pulsing once or twice a second every half second. As you can see right here, it's filling this thing up with dirt now. So because this filter is programmed, it's programmed to pull out dirt. It'll ignore all this stuff and pull out just the dirt. So uh, it's very handy. You might have a chest with two or three filters hooked up. One filter pulling one item out. Another filter pulling something else out. Very handy. But cool thing is you don't have to run engines all the time. And um, bad thing about engines, like even a redstone engine, is it's... It, it requires code to run that, so every every time the engine strokes, it's uh, um, Minecraft's running like a little computer code to make that one little redstone filter work. Well, right here, we just turned this off, so this thing right here is, is not running any code right now. So it's pretty nice to be able to turn your machines off. Uh, bad thing about uh, Buildcraft is if you turn machines off, they cool off, and then just a big hassle. These right here, you don't have to worry about them warming up or blowing up or anything like that. These filters are going to be your bread and butter. So let me show you um, how to place this thing down. First of all, let me just place it here and show you. You see a small dot right here and over here you see kind of like a plus sign. 
the plus sign is the input and the dot is the output. So if I want to pull something out of a chest, I got to make sure the plus sign is butted up against the machine. And then the, at that point, the dot will be facing away. So we can come over here and verify that. Here you can see the filter, and there you can see the little dot. So the dot's the output. And so there's times you might want to be able to um, rotate the dot. So you, for this purpose, you need a screwdriver or a sonic screwdriver. Um, obviously, the screwdriver is going to be easier to make and stuff. Sonic screwdriver, basically, um, it's sort of like the electric rats where it's got to be charged. So there's the uh, screwdriver. Let's go ahead and right click a machine. There we go. So it just rotates the machine between the six different facets or six different faces. So um, that's how you place it down and that's how you move it. So next we're going to cover the redstone tube. That's this stuff right here. It's basically it's just like a pneumatic tube except um, it carries redstone signal. So if we take this red alley wire off um, this timer, well, first of all, let's come over here and see how we're powering this up. We got a timer here. It puts out pulses and then pulses this filter. Well, over here, we're not pulsing the fil filter directly. We're doing it through a redstone tube. So um, the bad thing about red alley wire is it does not connect directly to this stuff. So what you have to do is place one of these jacketed wires down like this. Now these jacketed wires are pretty straightforward, easy to make. But basically you take a red alley ingot and surround it by covers and that will give you jacketed wire. And that will interface red alley wire to this stuff. So now here's another cool thing about this jacketed wire. Um, it doesn't have to connect to something in order just to uh, travel up and down surfaces. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see right here, as you can see right here, this red alley wire is traveling up the wall and across ceilings. So it can go vertically and across uh, ceilings and stuff, but it has to touch something. Whereas the jacket of wire, as you can see right here, it does not. Now you can make all kinds of jacket wire. This is cobblestone jacket wire. Um, the only there's no difference between any of them other than the cosmetics. So if you don't like the look of one type, you might use a different type. And so that's redstone tube and jacket wire. Oh, by the way, I did fail to mention why would you want to use this redstone tube? Well, you might have like five or six or seven machines. So let's come over here and see. Yeah. These right here are just filters, but let's just say they were um, like block break machines called block breaker or something. If you pulse a block breaker, it'll break the block in front of it. So let's say, let's put down these Coke oven bricks like this. We won't get this tutorial in about block breaker. So the gist of it is a block breaker breaks a block directly in front of it and it transmits it down into a uh, a pneumatic tube sort of so I don't know let's just say this is block breakers and you can see the gist of it right here so if we were to pulse this redstone tube would be pulsing all these filters at the same time or whatever so that basically that's the gist of that so one thing I've forgot to cover here is the restriction tube here's the restriction tube here you can see what it looks like it looks like a pneumatic tube but it's got a black band and so you might be wondering what is that for well first of all let's remove it and see what happens now you may not have noticed this before but when I f uh, pulse this filter it sent stuff over to this chest and now if I pulse this filter um, it's going to send stuff back over to this first chest so as you see the dirt's coming out let's go ahead and grab some more dirt here and so basically the way this works is what happens is whenever you pulse the filter um, whenever it's going to send stuff out here 
Uh, and then it's going to look to see what the first valid destination is, the closest valid destination. Both these destinations are valid. In other words, these, these dirt blocks will fit in either chest. But the filter will send stuff to uh, the closest chest. So if we do the math here, there's one, two, three, four. We're four blocks away there. So let's come over here, back to over here, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This chest is seven blocks away. Now since four is less than seven, this filter will send stuff to here. Let's go ahead and do that again and verify it. There we go. So sometimes we might want to send stuff to this chest instead of this chest. So what we can do is, is uh, put this item in here. It's called a restriction tube. And basically what it does, it tricks the filter into thinking that uh, this chest is a lot further away than what it is. So basically, if we remember the math we, we added, this is four blocks away, this one was seven. Well, restriction tube adds. I don't remember, it either adds 1,000 or 5,000. Let's just say it's 5,000. So it adds 5,000 to the math. And so if we put this restriction tier tube here, um, the filter thinks this thing is 5,004 blocks away, and it thinks this one's seven blocks away. And so um, stuff will go to this chest first. Let's turn this on and verify it. There we go, because this restriction tube is there, goes here first. Now, if this destination for some reason becomes invalid, like the inventory fills up or whatever, it will start going back to here. And so, restriction tubes are great for handling overflow. Um, like if you might want to have a chest that just handles overflow, it doesn't do anything but that. So, that's when you could use the restriction tube. Now you could put more one, more than one restriction tube, so you could do this number right here. You could put like two in a row, and this is going to add like 10,000 to the math. So um, if we were to put a third chest over here, if we were to do this and then put another chest right here, uh, here's a chest. There we go. It thinks this thing is 10,000 blocks away. This one's 5,000 blocks away, and it thinks this one's like 7 blocks away. So that's the gist of the restriction tube. Finally, let's cover this mag tube. What's a mag tube used for? Well, it's used for accelerating objects inside of a pneumatic tube. So here's some more pneumatic tube filter. Same principle. If we pulse the filter, it pulls stuff out of the chest, send it down the pneumatic tube, and then it'll get to right here. And this block right here I'm pointing at is called an accelerator. And basically it's going to accelerate the, the items going through there uh, into this mag tube so let's go ahead and turn this on and verify this there's a piece of dirt and as you can see right there it just accelerated and then it slowed back down so basically when an item's traveling through a mag tube it, it'll travel at a rate of uh, one block per tick or in other words 20 blocks per second so Mag tubes is kind of like a super highway, just speeds stuff up. But to interface to this pneumatic tube, you need an accelerator here, and you also need one here. Now, the only difference between the inputs, this one right here and that one, this one has to be powered. If you want to accelerate something, you have to give the accelerator power. So the way we power is blue, it, blue, trusty, blue trusty solar panels. You need five of them. Um, anything less than that, the accelerator won't turn on. Anything more than that's just overkill, but basically you put five solar panels down, and then uh, I'm going through blue LA wire into into a battery box, and then out of the battery box I go through another blue alloy wire, and finally to the accelerator. You don't have to have the battery box, but um, since these solar panels only put out power during the day, uh, if you want this machine to be able to run at night, you got to put a battery box down. Um. Here's the uh, same block. This is still an accelerator, but this one's actually decelerating. So if you don't give it electricity, um, or we don't have to give it electricity because right here we're just slowing stuff down. But once again, the accelerator is used to interface pneumatic tube to mag tube. So 
I believe that's about the gist of it. That's about everything. We got pneumatic tubes we covered, uh, redstone tubes, restriction tubes, mag tubes, accelerators, filters. Now, I know it's a lot to cover in one episode. Uh, I might have forgot something or left something out. So, uh, if I didn't answer your question, I can feel free to to answer. Be more, or feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to answer. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel. But the more likes the video gets, uh, more likely I am to do a video of that type. So, anyways, Grumpy, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.